now we are looking at a solution for introduction of software engineering uh, by dr rajiv mal and uh, this is uh, being created by him and he is a very eminent professor and world renowned professor so the book he has written this is the solution manual he has provided and we'll look at uh, various questions and answers uh, with respect to these books and various chapters so let us start the first one is we are going to see chapter 1 today this is simple introduction first question is what is the principal aim of the software engineering principle so what is the aim we have covered this already in uh, the lectures but still we'll try to formally answer them and what does the discipline of software engineering discuss so the answer is the principal aim of software engineering or uh, discipline is simply to provi provide or produce high quality software and in a cost effective manner so good quality software in cost effective manner this this is simply a name of software engineering now distinguish between program and a software product you can make a table to answer this so the programs they are developed by individuals for their personal use uh, they are therefore small in size they have limited functionality uh, since the author of program himself uses which writes it and he also maintains it there will be uh, a lack of good user interface and also documentation uh, just for instance the program developed by a student as part of his class assignment these are programs and they are not software products uh, we can't term them as software products while if we talk about software products they have multiple users first of all they have good uh, user interface they have user manuals good documentation support and since this software product has large number of users it is systematically designed and then carefully implemented and then tested also thoroughly it is tested in addition a software product consists not only of the program code so software product is uh, you can say an amalgamation of uh, various programs so program code but they have associated documents also like srs design document low level high level test documentation and users manual there uh, there is a uh, one more difference between our software products they are often too large to be developed by any individual so they are usually taken up by a team so it's a team effort now the question is do you agree with the following statement the emphasis of exploratory programming exploratory programming is correct correction is error correction while the software engineering practices emphasize error prevention give the reasonings behind your answer in exploratory programming what happens uh, the programmer writes by his own style his own intuition while uh, in software engineering if if um, a product is being made by applying or employing software engineering practices then it is well organized well uh, managed and uh, thoroughly uh, examined so i uh, suppose this answer this statement is actually correct but let us give some reasoning behind yes the exploratory programming it involves quick coming up with solution code and correcting it until it meets the user requirement while software engineering practices it they emphasize careful planning designing and preventing errors so sometimes it is called that exploratory programming is reactive programming while software engineering practices they are proactive uh, type of uh, phases or the policies then we have a question in uh, rajiv dr rajiv mal's book in the introduction chapter 4th question is what are the symptoms of or you know symptoms of the present software crisis so there there is some crisis which we discussed in the book and what factors they have contributed to the making of this present software crisis so we have to discuss about the software crisis and what are the possible solution to the present software crisis so what is software crisis and how you are going to solve it the answer is we'll give part by part first is the symptoms of present software crisis they are you know increasing cost of software product products are unreliable that means they are uh, they contain bugs and often they are delivered late means they run out of schedule then the second uh, question which is asked the answer is the factors which con contribute to this uh, software crisis these are the increasing or increasing complexity of software product and professionals they are not uh, properly trained in software engineering techniques and also 
the progress in software engineering discipline itself you know people talk about compiler design they talk about architecture but software engineering is also a very important basic building block for uh, people who are related to softwares finally the solutions so this says the possible solutions to the presently software uh, or present software crisis is just by giving adequate training in software engineering techniques and the progress of the software engineering discipline itself fifth question is list the major differences between the exploratory and modern software development practices first is use of life cycle model emphasizes phase containment of errors so errors will be found or can they can be targeted or caught in the place where they are supposed to happen then modern development uh, starts with a complete and document uh, requirement specification so every every aspect and things are properly documented then the design is also taken up or created with well defined design methodology then we have testing which is uh, you know thorough testing in present times visibility is also good in design and code and various metrics are used various metrics have been proposed and they are being used uh, heavily projects are planned because all are uh, examined and analyzed and then documented so they are thoroughly planned and various cases case tools are available and now we are talking about error prevention rather than error correction so these are the differences between these two practices then we have a question 6 what do you understand by control flow structure of a program control flow structure of a program and the second part is why it is difficult to understand a program having a messy control flow structure first is the control flow structure of a program it represents the sequence in which the various statements of the programs are executed so it is talking about the sequence the step by step execution of various instructions you can say it is quite difficult to understand if the flow structure is messy since one uh, or an individual normally understand a program by just tracing different paths from the input to the output or from the output to the input but if we have a messy or uh, not well planned or well managed or well written flow structure then there will be number of paths so it will take us long time to actually trace these path or eventually to understand the program seventh is what is a flow chart and how is flow charting technique useful for software development this is an important question first is flow chart they are representing or they represent the flow of control this is so important then this flow chart can be uh, a, a design technique or a technique wherein you can have a good flow structure represented and these flow charts they are very useful for documentation and they also help for any user to understand or the program very evenly eighth is what do you understand by visibility of design and code you know we have discussed this just now visibility of design and code and how uh, does this increase visibility help in systematic software development visibility answer would be this visibility refers to the production of good quality reviewed documents we are talking about documents which are generated in each and every phase so if you have a good quality uh, review documents we say the code or designer code has good visibility and the second part is increase visibility how it is going to help so increase visibility helps in systematic developments since it becomes easier to track the progress and the plans now the program uh, of pm or program manager he can just by viewing these or because he has greater visibility he can easily tell what is the status what is the progress etc ninth is what do you understand by the term structured programming how do modern programming languages such as this pascal and c facilitate writing structured programs so structured programming actually you have functions in here and what are the advantages of writing structured program against the unstructured programs this is an important question structured programming has two parts first is uh, is modular program means we have modules in, functions in the form of modules and they only use structured constructs like sequence a selection iteration three sequence selection and iteration they are not dealing uh, they do not deal with go to so these three are important and the advantage part is once you write structured program you know they are quite easy to understand and once you can understand it in a good manner you can easily debug and then also after some time you can maintain it tenth is what are the three basic types of program construct which are necessary to develop a program for any given problem and give example of this construct for any high level language you know let us answer it first as i just suggested in the earlier question 
uh, the answer to the question. There are three basic type of program constructs which are necessary to develop a program. People have realized with past experiences that only three program constructs are important, and they can any logic can be implemented by these three. First is select sequence, then we have selection, and then we have iteration. And let us take uh, the second part, which is asking about the construct in C. So sequence can be just like this: an assignment operator or an assignment uh, instruction. Selection is uh, you can use some if else, and then iteration is just a while or do while or for. These three are able to represent any programming language uh, logic. Now eleventh is what do you understand by program module, and what are the important characteristics of a program module? So what is it? Program module. This is independently compilable piece of program code. So in modular programming or structured programming, what we do, we make uh, you know various modules, and these modules are independent of each other. They are um, written and they are compiled and they are acting by themselves, you know, in an independent manner. So first one is what is the basic difference between control flow oriented and a data flow oriented design technique. and can you think of any reason as to why a data flow oriented design technique is likely to produce better design than a control flow oriented technique design so here we have a, a, you know we need to speak about two things and the difference that is the control flow and data flow so we'll uh, answer them part by part first is in a control flow design the software is designed by designing the, by examining and uh, designing the control flow in the program using a flow chart or a similar notation so we adopt this flow chart uh, methodology because we need to show the flow of uh, the, not the data because data flow is actually about that but control flow how the program instructions or the program control is is going from one place to another while in data flow oriented design the the design is arrived at from an analysis of data flow which is inherent in the program so now in data flow oriented design we are concerned about the flow of data only if this is the data where it is flowing where it is going where it is coming how it is changing so all these aspects are important while data flow oriented design is of concern data flow oriented design techniques they provide better decomposition of the problem because the concentration is on the data rather than on the flow which can be different for dif different uh, users and uh, you know people then we have a uh, one more question that is which uh, we are going to ju answer just now so it's, it's a long question but still uh, need to be we need to be very precise in answering so what are the two well known principles used in software engineering to tackle the complexity of development of large programs two well known principles discuss these two principles and explain how these two principle help tackle program complexity so the answer is quite easy there are two uh, well known principle to do this first is abstraction and the other is decomposition so these two are important and i hope you are going to uh, answer this part because this will take some uh, effort so we'll try to be very precise and concise here will not going will not be going to the to the greater detail this is just uh, to give you an idea about how to answer and what will be the uh, you know possible answers hint to the questions which are posed in uh, dr rajiv mal's book 15 what is a data structure oriented software design methodology and how it is different from data flow oriented design so we have data structure oriented and we have data flow oriented design methodology so in this data structure oriented design what it, what we do is we we are interested in data structures so we need to design these data structures in the program they are designed in the beginning and very very carefully so based on this data structure then the code structure is then designed so first data structure then the code structure 16 is discuss the major advantages of object oriented design now ood methodologies over the data flow oriented design methodology so object oriented against data flow oriented because object oriented design it represents the uh, real life entities so object oriented methodologies they are providing better abstraction first of all and decomposition of the problem and if they are providing this abstraction decomposition easily they are also able to provide or easily handle complexity as well and one more important aspect of object oriented methodology is the reuse of the software components whose which you have uh, made by a lot of effort and you can easily reuse it 17 is what is computer systems engineering this is important and how it is different from software engineering people often confuse that software engineering is nothing but computer systems engineering computer system engineering actually addresses issues which which 
uh, issues in development of high quality systems cost effectively so computer system engineering they have or they uh, are dependent or involved in development of high quality systems and that to cost effectively so this was uh, the first uh, chapter introduction question and answers of uh, dr rajiv mal's book software engineering thank you so much take care